A new leftist government, coupled with persistent debt, has left many questioning Greece's future in the European Union. The Union and the International Monetary Fund have lost patience with the country, which now seems more reluctant than ever to make hard choices that would put them back on the road to financial stability. The Greek Orthodox Church has offered to help, although it is unclear what exactly they have in mind. The Church owns more land in Greece than any other entity except the government itself. It's made it clear that it isn't planning to just sell off the land and give the proceeds to the government. Instead, the church wants to come up with some form of joint economic development that would involve these land holdings. This may be a response to those who state that the church isn't paying its fair share of taxes and has gone unscathed while the average Greek citizen has suffered hardship as the Greek economy falters. Although Sunnis and Shiites have remained at relative peace in Yemen, Shiite Houthi rebels supported by Iran and Sunni Muslims supported by Saudi Arabia are stirring up trouble and exacerbating the existing tensions that have existed between the northern and southern regions of the country. After years of fighting, both regions unified in 1990, but tensions have long persisted with the Marxist South, never feeling that it had been fully integrated, and the central government not being strong enough to control all parts of the country. Now hope is fading that the shaky union can survive as the sectarian divisions, fueled by outsiders with their own agendas, turn the country into an international tug of war. Analysts are divided as to whether the conflict will evolve primarily along regional lines or sectarian ones. And the final answer may be both. Some in the south see the wider destabilization as a good opportunity for fresh secession. However, one thing is certain. Given Iranian, Saudi Arabian, and even U.S. interests in the matter, the Yemenis will not be left to settle their differences on their own. The decision last year by the United States Supreme Court in the case of Town of Greece v. Galloway set the stage for non-Christian prayers to become an issue of contention in state houses and city legislatures all over the country. The Supreme Court had narrowly ruled that opening government meetings with prayer is not a violation of the Constitution as long as an open invitation is extended to all belief sets. As a result, the Iowa State Legislature recently opened its doors to the first ever Wiccan invocation within its halls. Of course, not everybody was pleased that a pagan supplication was going to be uttered in the state's hallowed chambers, and several Republican lawmakers and Christians in the gallery made their displeasure known. The most visible example of disdain came from Representative Rob Taylor, who decided that Jesus would want him to turn his back on Priestess Deborah Maynard of the People's Church, a Unitarian Universalist congregation, as she recited her incantation, which included the line, By the air that gives us breath and logic, may all here find thoughtful solutions to the problems that are presented. Other Republican lawmakers chose simply to be absent during the prayer, and Christians in the audience later admitted to ignoring Maynard's recitation as they silently asked their God to turn the woman's heart to Christ.